Welcome to the Lippus Report. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Lippus Report video podcast. Well, during this video podcast, we'll share with you the results of the Cisco Nexus 9000 power efficiency test. Cisco has recently introduced its Nexus 9000 data center modulus switch series, which is impressive in terms of performance, power efficiency, 1040, 100 gigabit ethernet port density, its programming environment, and orchestration attributes. Well, in the previous two Lipus Report video podcasts on the Nexus 9000, we reported the Nexus 9000's performance test results and programmability attributes, both of which are new industry standards. Well, we have another standard in power efficiency to report. We wanted to understand how power efficient the Nexus 9000 is from a watts per 10 gigabit ethernet port to its overall power design. And data center switches have not been the most power efficient, considering a five to 10 watt per 10 gigabit ethernet port draw as typical for an aggregation switch with 384 10 gigabit ethernet ports, which adds up to some two to four kilowatt draw and entire server rack draws between eight kilowatts to 10 kilowatts. Well, without new power efficiency designs, power consumption would only increase as 10, 40, and 100 gigabit ethernet port density increases and consumes more power. Therefore, the need to design data center switches that are much more power efficient. What we found in this test is that the Cisco team delivers the most power efficient data center modular switch we have ever tested to date. In this video podcast, I'm joined with Thomas Scheibe, who is the Director of Product Management at Cisco, as we review the Cisco Nexus 9000 power test results. But with that said, say hello, Thomas, and welcome to the Lippus Report video podcast. Hello, Nick. Good to be here. Excellent. Well, I'm so glad that you are yeah. here. <laughs> it's great to be here and talk to you about the Nexus 9000 and its independent power efficiency results. Excellent. Very good. Well, uh, let me give you uh, a little bit of an idea of like what the actual results were. So. Um, Thomas, let's start uh, with the description of the Nexus 9000 from a power efficiency point of view. Uh, what special power efficiency designs did engineering put into the Nexus 9000? Um, and we can start with that. Okay, so there's actually a whole range of different things that we did in the switch. It starts actually with a very simple design. Uh, one of the items we did is we have no midplane in the switch. There's literally no thing in the middle that uh, prevents the air from flowing from the back to the front, from the front to the back. The other thing what we did is we focused on the amount of ASICs. We wanted the least amount of ASICs possible. And so the way we achieved this is actually having a mix of merchant ASICs and Cisco ASICs. The second item that we looked at were the power supply. You clearly want to use very power conscious components. And we picked a platinum rated power supply for the switch. Uh, next item you really always want to uh, control is the, the temperature. You want to have an intelligent control within your chassis. One sensors that actually can measure at any time what the temperature is and then adjust the fan speed which has a direct impact on your power consumption as well. Excellent, great. So uh, there is a concatenate uh, of different um, designs that mm -hmm. you guys put into the Nexus 9000. Yep. So it's both having custom ASICs and also a merchant um, ASICs. Yep. No mid-plane, um, you know, so we have a much more uh, cleaner flow of, uh, of air. Uh, yep. So that keeps it, clue, um, keeps it uh, cool. Uh, and then also being able to efficiently model, um, uh, adjust up and down the other uh, fan speeds. Correct. Ex Tom is excellent. So it looks like there were three major design achievements uh, yep. with the 9000 to reduce the power and make it much more efficient. Uh, one is no mid-plane, so we have um, cleaner flow of air. Yep. All right. Second was a mixture of both custom ASICs and merchant ASICs. Yep. And the third was being able to uh, basically monitor temperature and adjust fan speeds uh, accordingly. Correct. That's uh, it. Yep. Awesome. Very good. Well, let's see really what that actually did and, yep. uh, and how it delivered, right? So uh, with the Nexus 9000, we configured it in the performance test configuration, which was set up with 288 40 gigabit ethernet ports. We created a standard Lipis less Ixia iMix of traffic, uh, which is uh, basically running at 0, 30, and 100% of line rate, uh, and measured the Nexus 9000 power consumption at each one of those points. We then calculate the power consumption of the Nexus 9000 on a 10 gigabit ethernet port and also 40 gigabit ethernet port basis. To compare different electronic equipment, we then calculate the Nexus 9000's tier value, uh, which is basically a measurement that allows uh, different kinds of electronic devices to uh, look at their, uh, to measure their power efficiency. 
What we found was that the Nexus 9000 is the most power efficient modular data switch in the industry. We found that the Nexus 9508 is the most power efficient modular data center switch in the industry with a power draw per 10 gigabit ethernet of 3.85 watts and 15.4 watts per 40 gigabit ethernet. For reference, it takes five watts to power a Christmas tree light bulb. We calculate that it costs $5,402 to power a fully loaded Nexus 9508 per year. The Nexus 9508's tier value is 246, but remember, higher tier values are better than lower ones. Note that other core switches we have tested draw from a high of 22 watts to a low of nine watts per 10 gigabit ethernet port. The Nexus 9508 draws less than half the power of the lowest core switches we have ever tested. So great, so Thomas, you know, these are fantastic power efficiency numbers. Really, congratulations Thanks. to you and uh, the entire, um, you know, engineering team. So, you know, how did you achieve it? You know, uh, how did you get the, these low, uh, low power consumption numbers? Yeah, I mean, it literally state, uh, starts when you when you build the, the switch, you need to just go in with an objective saying power efficiency ought to be a design objective. It's just not falling out on its own. You really need to design for it. And as we touched on a little bit earlier, is we, we really looked at all the different components that go into this. It's the power supply, it's the ASICs, it's the airflow. Let me just pick one example. If you look at our 36 port, 40 gigabit Ethernet line card, mm -hmm. we literally have three ASICs on there, right? If you compare this to some of the other designs in the industry, you see twice as many ASICs on there, right? The performance of the line card is actually not even that good, even with twice as many ASICs. And you see a lot of memory chips, whereas in our case, we put all the memory chips actually as the buffer was in the ASICs itself. Uh, on top of it, and that's to come to the other point I made earlier, we use a mix of uh, Cisco ASICs as well as Merchant ASICs. So we actually have a mix of 40 nanometer ASICs, which is Merchant ASICs, as well as 20 nanometer ASICs, which are ours. Mm -hmm. So if you have that kind of combination of uh, very dense uh, ASICs, you can get away with less per line card, which automatically translates into less power. Mm. Uh, excellent, very, very good. Th uh, thank you, Thomas. So um, in addition to the ASIC engineering, you know, I guess maybe the question is like, what are some of the other attributes of the Nexus 9000 that contributed to the overall low power consumption uh, and its efficiency? Yeah, as mentioned, I mean, really, A601, that's an important piece. Yep. The other one is, is the airflow. How do, you, how do you cool your chassis, right? Because particularly in these kind of densities and speeds, this is really where, where a lot of the power goes. Uh, and so one of the key innovations really for us is we have no mid-plane in the chassis. I think it's actually the first chassis in the industry that does that. Uh, and what that really uh, does for power efficiency is that you have the air coming in from the front, flowing out in the back, and there's no blocking mid-plane in the middle, right? And by the way, actually, this is not actually helping us just with the power efficiency. That will help us too with upgrades in the future when we go to 100 gig, because now we don't have to replace a mid-plane, right? Mm. That's just a side benefit besides the power. So, but that's one of the things that we did to, to really influence the overall power consumption of the chassis. Excellent, great, great, Thomas. And, and really, when I uh, look at all the numbers uh, from here, um, you know, the Nexus 9000 has got to be at least 15% more power efficient than anything else that's out there in the marketplace. You, you got that, it's actually precisely right. If you look at the next best, that's what we, what we see. We're literally 15% lower than that. And then obviously the other switches out there. Yeah, no, much worse. Numbers, yes. Excellent, Thomas. So, so now with all of these great, you know, power efficiency design yeah. options that are built into the Nexus 9000, can that be summed up um, and put to work uh, with a different kind of network architecture and design than the data center? You know, or um, or how does it um, get most efficiently utilized? You know, within a data center now or a cloud provider? Yeah, good point. So, yeah, I mean. Clearly, I mean, you can use it in an in a existing design, right? The typical design that you have in a data center is like your access aggregation layer, and you can actually use that Nexus 9000 in the access if you want to as a uh, one 10 GT access switch. Uh, interestingly enough, we actually designed it for that as well. Huh. We have line cards. But I think what we mostly talked about is really 10 gig and 40 gig here, and you would use an aggregation, aggregation switch. Design-wise, clearly a lot of people talk these days about uh, uh, scale-out designs, which are really fabric designs, which like a spine layer and a leaf layer. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the Nexus 9000 really would fit very well into the uh, spine layer and gives you a chance to scale out very large uh, clusters for 10 gig server environments. We literally have customers looking at anywhere from 200, which is very small, mm -hmm. to 200,000 10 gig server environments. Wow. And that switch, because it has this combination of very low power per port and a lot of ports, is very effective in that, in that environment. 
But let me actually come back to another point I wanted to make, uh, just from a, from a box perspective on the uh, Nexus 9000 itself. Yep. Uh, if you look at this, we really have four power supplies on there, uh, but you only really need two to run a fully loaded chassis. And then the additional two you really use for redundancy, right? Either two plus one or two plus two grid redundancy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're gonna run load sharing across these power supplies, which basically get you the best uh, uh, efficiency in terms of using power. Um, the other thing I, I wanna point out is, is because people look at this chassis and we're saying, wow, you have four power supplies on and then you have actually space for more, right? Why did you do that? And the answer to this really is, we wanted to be very power efficient on one end. On the flip side, we wanted to make sure for the next generation of line cards, when you go to like 100 gig and double up or quadruple up the speed, yeah. the chassis ought to be the same. And you have enough headroom and power there, right? Because we all know once you have faster backplane, I mean faster fabric modules and higher speed optics, the power will go up, right? Yeah. We know that. And so we put that uh, headroom into this uh, chassis so you can do this because we didn't want to end up in a position where we're saying, hey, customers want to use that chassis, they want to go to 100 gig, now they don't have enough power and they might have to go like to fixed optics, which is the one way you can cheat a little bit. Yeah. And so that's the reason if you look at from the design, very power efficient, but headroom for the future as well. Yeah. Um, that's, I think, probably the way I want to sum it up. Sum it up. Yeah, very good, excellent. And, and we know that these modular switches have a very long shelf life, you know, like uh, they have well over a decade, sometimes two decades, you know, within organizations. So that's that's great. That's, that's a good point, yeah. We clearly have in the past, we have customers literally mm -hmm. have not unplugged their chassis for 10 to 15 years. I mean, yeah, we designed it with that in mind. We want to have customers the chance to use this for at least two or three generations. Great, great, Thomas, thank you. Great. Well, we've been talking about the new Cisco Nexus 9000 power consumption test results with Thomas Scheiber, who is the Director of Product Management here at Cisco. So, Thomas, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thanks a lot, Nick. This was fun. Great. Excellent. And thank you all so much for watching. That concludes this edition of the Lipis Report. Thank you for joining us. Look for us every Tuesday and Thursday. To get your free subscription to the Lipis Report newsletter, go to www.lipisreport.com. To sponsor the Lipis Report podcast, send email to sales at lipis.com. We've got to go, and so do you. See you next time.